Damn it, Bobby, this just ain't right. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Bobby G. We back with another video. And today we got this one from The Flight Mike. This one's called This is a Huge Mistake. Uh, morale sucks, plain and simple. You know, I just feel so bad for the people I work with, Dan. No matter what happens, last next year is gonna be my last year on television. It's official, one of the most beloved Damn. shows on sports television is officially over, and there is absolutely nothing that we can do about it. So you might be wondering, how do we get to a point where a network fumbled this so badly? And the story is very depressing. So before we get to the content, we are on the grind to 1 million subscribers. Hey, uh flight mike what is what's going on bro is it a special day looking all fucking spiffy and shit my boy make sure you subscribe and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow and now that we get all that out of the way do the intro man this long ass intro Mic check one two one two. What's going on, everybody? When TNT first obtained the rights to broadcast NBA games all the way back in 1989, fans from all over the world began giving the show. Bro, look at young Ernie, bro. <laughs> young EJ. Led by Ernie Johnson, their unwavering support. The NBA was about to enter a new day and age. We were at the end of the Magic and Berg era. The bad boy Pistons were dominating the league with their physical play, and a young Dean Smith protege by the name of Michael Jordan was approaching his first of six titles on his way to becoming a global sensation, which would expand the scope of basketball forever. These were humble beginnings for everybody's favorite show, which would soon go on to become a staple in the households of basketball lovers all across America. And you can probably imagine how much different it looked and sounded back then. But just for safe measure, look at how soft-spoken Charles Barkley is in one of his first on-air interviews as an analyst while he was still playing in the NBA. Uh, Utah's playing a, a perfect half of basketball. That does two things. Number one, it stops the crowd from getting into the game. And the Seattle Supersonics play on emotion, and it's keeping their emotion in check. It's so funny because this is kind of like our... <laughs> Yo, Charles, what the fuck is wrong with your voice, nigga? <laughs> <clears throat> Put a little uh, oomph in the chest, my boy. And it's keeping their emotion in check. It's so funny because this is kind of like our equivalent to bringing Draymond Green or Paul George to the NBA Finals broadcast. And I guess with the creation of social media, players are a little bit more comfortable behind a microphone. Back then, you could just tell Charles Barkley is so nervous here. The show would begin picking up steam in 1998 when they would sign Kenny the Jet Smith. Now, this was not too long after winning back-to-back -back titles with Hakeem Olajuwon and the Houston Rockets as a key role player kenny was brought in because he understood what it was like to be in an nba locker room damn the jet went back to back that's tough it was very relatable in that regard but he was extremely charismatic as well and knew how to work a microphone two years later following his retirement charles barkley became a member as well and the team was pretty much born they would try to figure out who would be an ideal fourth person to join kenny ernie and chuck and would give opportunities to magic johnson reggie miller and chris weber until they would finally find the perfect fourth for their trio wait who did they weber have until and would give opportunities to magic johnson reggie miller and chris weber until they would okay reggie miller is not bad bro i kind of i low-key fuck with reggie miller on the mic I don't know. I didn't really watch too much of uh, Magic Johnson, so I don't know. But finally, find the perfect fourth for their trio. Jack just concluded his memorable stint as a member of the Boston Celtics, and he decided to join TNT in 2011. That's how we got inside the NBA as we know it today. Throughout its time, the NBA on TNT has grown right along. 2011 would have been who was the champ? Who was the champs in 2011? Was it the Mavericks? Yeah, I think it was the Mavericks, right? Alongside the NBA itself. As one of the products has grown, so has the other. The show has been one of the main links that has connected us from Jordan to Kobe, from Kobe to LeBron, and now from LeBron to Wemby. But what has separated this show from the rest of sports it's, shows around- Is Wemby the new, is Wemby like the new, the new era of basketball, the new LeBron? Around the world is not simply due to the quality of their sports commentary. Actually, despite it being a table that holds both champions and MVPs, it's actually been their commentary about anything other than sports which has drawn in so much attention i'm sure at this point we're all huge fans of charles barkley's commentary on the women in san antonio i see why these women big in san antonio these days are good and as a result of this form of commentary <laughs> <the show> <laughs> bro that is such a wild thing to say 
I have a homie who's from the San Antonio area, bro, and I asked him about that. He said it's true, bro. The women in San Antonio are extra large. I don't make the rules, bro. It got incredibly popular and has almost two dozen sports Emmy Awards, three more of which have come just earlier this year. Over time, we have developed relationships with the show because of the relationships with the guys, the real life characters on the screen. Whether it's involving the never tiring battle between Shaq and Chuck, Kenny <laughs> racing Shaq to the board, or even just. Er <laughs> nah, bro, what the fuck? Holy shit, this nigga just crashed out. And Chuck, Kenny racing Shaq to the board. <laughs> Bro, that's like a tree falling into another fucking tree. Or even just Ernie policing the gang like a tired middle school teacher. To be real about it, I'm still kind of waiting on a heist movie with the four of them starring as a gang of misfit crooks. But I digress. Because despite how popular Inside the NBA is, no matter how much- Alright, I need to stop cussing, bro. I'm really gonna try. The fans seem to enjoy it. No matter how many awards it's won, all of that is now over. And there's nothing anybody can do about it to save it. So there will be no more opportunities for us to watch Charles Barkley kiss Don donkey's asses or even worse and this seriously no hurts. my headphones just died are you fucking serious bro to say but kissing dick bavette oh how did my headphones just die all right y'all we back headphones are charged more opportunities for us to watch charles barkley kiss donkey's asses or even worse and this seriously hurts to say but kissing dick bavetta for a group that boasts such a strong collection bro that is crazy chuck what are you thinking in this exact moment bro what is the thought process at this very moment Seriously hurts to say, but kissing Dick Bavetta. For a group that boasts such a strong collection of personalities, I think we can all agree that Sir Charles is the one we'll remember most as an on-air personality. He is funny, and despite popular opinion, is actually more intelligent than many people think. He also has an MVP to boast, which doesn't hurt, and is one of those rare people that can receive jokes with the same humility that he dishes them out with. And though he may not be the most articulate guy ever, Charles Barkley has proven to be a very likable person. If he was not on it, the show simply wouldn't be the same after all the man has four sports emmy awards for a reason however this is where it just goes from sad holy to shit work. bro he's got four emmys how do you get those bro do people just like vote people who watch that shit do they just vote first in the face of these forthcoming changes that will be putting an end to the show's legendary run after next season charles barkley broke all of our hearts this past season during the nba finals when he said this i've talked to all the other networks but i ain't going nowhere uh, other than TNT, but I have made the decision myself. No matter what happens, last next year is going to be my last year on television. And I just want to say thank you to my NBA family. You guys have been great to me. My heart is full with joy and, and gratitude. But I'm going to pass the baton at the end of next year. I hope the NBA stays with TNT. But for me personally, I wanted you guys to hear from me because I'm not doing any more interviews. Don't y'all be calling me. Nobody calling me. I'm not talking about this again, but I want to tell my NBA and T NBA TV and T TNT family that I'm not going to another network, but I'm going to pass the baton to either Jamal Crawford or Vince Carter or, or you, Steve. But next year, I'm going to just retire after 25 years. And I just want to say thank you. And I wanted y'all to hear from me first. This has brought with it a lot of public outcry over the changing of the guard, as fans be have begun expressing straight their frustration from over the likely loss of their favorite show. And nobody has been more outspoken about it than Charles Barkley himself, who eviscerated his employers on the Dan Patrick show. Uh, morale sucks, plain and simple. You know, I just feel so bad for the people I work with, Dan. You know, you know, these people have families, and uh, I just really feel bad for them right now. You know, these people I work with, they screwed this thing up clearly and uh we don't have zero idea what's gonna happen i don't feel good i'm not gonna lie especially when they came out yesterday and said we bought college football i was like well damn they could have used that money to buy the nba wait a minute shouldn't we be spending every dime we got to keep the nba so morale sucks to be honest with you dan for a guy whose job damn they really bought college football but not inside the nba that's the type of shit that don't make sense bro that's like taking nacho fries off off the Taco Bell menu, like shit like that just don't make sense. Like why? What the fuck? Of over two decades is being- College football already has ESPN. 
CBS, ABC. What the fuck? Like, come on. Canceled. This may not exactly be the best route to go about saving it. Then again, that's part of the reason that we love Chuck so much. He says what he means, and he means what he says. So at this point, you might be wondering, Mike, what exactly is causing TNT to let go of inside the NBA? Why exactly is Charles Barkley retiring? Well, the NBA plans on keeping NBA programming on ABC and ESPN by the way of their parent company, Disney, which will be paying almost $3 billion billion dollars annually while also giving new rights packages to both NBC and Amazon as well. So the odd man out in this case is, well, none other than TNT. Without getting overly emotional about it, this could prove to be a horrific mistake for TNT. It's no secret at this point that ESPN has a revolving door of personalities. Ah, uh, shit. This could definitely, this could, I could definitely see this being the end of the road for TNT, bro. Gosh, bro, that sucks. Some that criticize ESPN for being, for lack of a better way of saying it, too woke. But the NBA on TNT, on the other hand, has been the exact opposite. You don't typically get a lot of political commentary on Inside the NBA. There's four dudes that love basketball, three of which that have had extensive experience playing basketball, ripping on each other, and laughing about basketball the way you would do with your buddies at a middle school lunch table. People tune in late at night and lose that extra hour of sleep on work nights because the show gives them a place that they can go to get away from their worries and be entertained by a genuine group of guys that have Bro, it's literally the first of its kind. Inside the NBA is the first sports show where it's like sit down, lunch table type talk. It's not fucking ESPN just forcing you a bunch of news and shit about LA and New York. Like, nah, this shit is the first of its kind no desire to conform to the politically correct world of today. Plus, not only does the cast have the type of chemistry that is really, really hard to come by, but they have also been together for over a dozen years and have built a nearly perfect formula. Something which ESPN has attempted to replicate, but they never were able to. And that's despite ESPN having- Bro, this show has so much aura, bro. At one point, ESPN did too, bro, with Sports Center back in the day, like how it used to be. But it's it's just not the same anymore and you got a bunch of different shows now like but inside the nba has so much fucking aura bro it's it's crazy stephen a smith who is one of the most entertaining commentators out there if this deal doesn't somehow drastically change in the near future and ernie and the gang even if it were sadly without chuck won't find a new home then one would have to expect that the nba's recent downslide could continue or perhaps get worse the crazy shack what the fuck was that bro <laughs> This is off topic, I'm sorry, but I just can't let that slide, bro. Shaq. Come on, the fact bro. that the NBA's recent downslide could continue or perhaps get worse. The crazy part is, is when Adam Silver was asked about this situation, this is what he had to say. The, oh, no, show. we're never going to lose Charles and Kenny. We're all still talking. Who knows how think, it's going to work out? Do you, I, can't, I can't imagine those guys won't be announcing together in the future. It's no secret that inside the NBA has one of the most loyal fan bases out there. And who knows? Maybe there are enough oh, disgruntled. That's why these niggas be frustrated, bro. Everybody's just so okay with like, like no, bro. Shaq and Kenny are going, and Chuck, they're going to leave. If y'all don't figure out a deal with them, they're going to leave. They're trying to just play it cool, like it's so nonchalant. Like nah, y'all gotta, y'all gotta do something about this. Told about this whole situation and make a difference if they were to protest the loss of one of the best sports shows in history in favor of a program that more and more people are becoming seriously discontented with. You can't just get rid of everyone's favorite meal and expect them. Literally, bro, I'm not trying to sit here like respectfully. I'm not trying to sit here and watch and listen to fucking Monica McNutt or I forgot what this girl's name is or Stephen A and like Michael Wilbon, Bob Myers. Like I'm not trying to sit there and listen to fucking Doris Burke and JJ Reddick. Nigga, no. Put on some Shaq and Kenny and Chuck, bro. Like, that's how you get to really know the game. Are becoming seriously discontented with. You can't just get rid of everyone's favorite meal and expect them not to hold it against you. But unless an absolute miracle happens, the grim reality of the situation is that with Barkley's impending retirement, the death of the show is inevitable. Seeing that just as recently as a few weeks ago, the NBA actually formalized the written contracts of this whole thing with ESPN, NBC, and Amazon for a combined $7.4 billion dollars. 
dollars annually and are currently entering the final stages of a deal. It should be noted that Damn, they're losing the money. billion dollar annual package that ESPN is receiving will include a conference final, weekly primetime clashes, the NBA finals, and the WNBA. If this doesn't tell you that ESPN's attempts to climb out of the financial straits they have gotten themselves into over the years by diving headfirst into the world of ridiculous hot takes in an attempt to boost ratings hasn't worked, then I don't know what to tell you. But at the end of the day, what can you really expect? This is the 21st century, and consumers are moving to streaming video and cutting out the cable altogether, even though if it means that they're probably paying the same amount or even more for it. The numbers tell a lot of the story. In 2013, ESPN was in a whopping 98.5 million homes. In 2023, just a decade later, they're down to 73 million. That's over 25 million less homes. Wait, hold up. I was looking at Shaq, dumbass, with the glasses. What did it, What does the bottom thing say? They lost how much? In 2013, ESPN was in a whopping 98.5 million homes. In 2023, just a decade later, they're down to 73 million. That's over 25 million less homes in only 10 yeah, years. Yeah, that's not good. Not exactly trending in the right direction. This is all to say that despite the desire of millions of people that want to see the TNT crew stick around, there are simply greater forces at play. And if that's not enough for you to make matters even stranger, there are now serious reports out there suggesting that Disney and the NFL could form a partnership that would give the NFL a stake in Disney's ESPN, while Disney would take control of NFL media. What this would mean for NFL coverage and the media as we know it remains to be seen, but with Disney stronger than ever, it's clear that the NBA on TNT is soon going to be a thing of the past. Then, nobody is safe. It's not an ideal situation by any stretch, but I'm thankful that we'll at least be able to see these guys banter for one more year. Oh, we're gonna have, at one day, we're only gonna have three fucking things to watch, dog. It's gonna be Amazon, Disney, and what's the other one? And fucking Apple. Amazon, Disney, and Apple are they gonna be only three streaming services you can watch anything on, bro. Maybe Google. Like, this shit has become a real life game of Monopoly. Before it's gone for good. Let me know down below what you guys think. I really hope that there's like some type of way or a miracle that we can get inside the NBA back. I don't think it's going to happen. It's not looking like it's going to happen, but sheesh. Hopefully the boys don't get screwed out of their money though, because they worked however long they did. So leave this video a like, subscribe to the channel. Come on, bro. It's free. We trying to get to 500. Let's get to 400 subs. And yeah, that's going to do it for this vid though, you guys. I'm going to catch you guys in another one. Have a good day. Peace.